I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we're going to talk foundation insulation and continuity of our control layers and a sacrifice that we make with this concrete slab. Let's do it now. Okay, we are at a small home that our firm's building in Columbia, Missouri. This project has a tuck under basement, we're in the basement, and uh, a couple like mechanical room, mud room on this level. So we have a concrete slab and we have concrete walls. This is a poured in place foundation. Uh, we have a footing and then walls sitting on top of it. And we have backfill, insulation, and, and concrete. It's not that simple though. So let's talk about our choices that we've made and how we got to where we are today. Uh, let's start with uh, the footing and the insulation on top of the footing. So in this instance, we have a two or a two foot wide by 12 inch tall footing that this wall sits on. Butting to the side of that footing, we have one layer of this uh, subterra from Halo. This is a GPS graphite, graphite polystyrene uh, insulation. And then we have a second layer that sits on top of the footing. So effectively we have somewhere in the range of, what is that? It's a 10 to 20, it's an R20 underneath our slab. The reason we choose to use this subterra, number one, uh, the GPS off gases a lot less than other foam insulations uh, over their lifetime, meaning we get less thermal drift. We're not losing uh, the voided space by off gassing. And so this product holds its R value more. The other reason is it has this facer. And when we use their tape to tape the seams, we get a vapor control layer. So we have a continuous vapor barrier underneath this slab without having to have that layer of plastic, which, yeah, it can be a little challenging from time to time to tape your layers of foam together, but it's a vapor control layer. We're not terribly concerned with its continuity. We want it to be good, but if it's not amazing, it still does a pretty decent job. Uh, you have to think of vapor differently than air. So if you think about vapor pressure as being a uniform load over the entire surface. If you poke a hole in that vapor control layer, vapor can get through that hole that you poked when it's at that hole. The vapor that's say over here away from the hole is not going to go through that hole. If this were an air control layer, one hole means all the air will move towards that. So it's a point load rather than a uniform load. Since we're just trying to control vapor here, that with some tape, it's more than enough. It meets the, it meets the, uh, IRC code and we're not really worried about it. So we have the two layers underneath the slab of the Halo Subterra uh, and that product is spec to be able to be below grade. We've cheated the system here and technically we're not running with their, um, their recommendation just because we didn't order enough. We have the Interra on the sidewalls here and you can see about 10 inches of it sticking up or six inches of it. What we've learned is the reflective face on that can actually reflect and affect other pieces of insulation. Like we could get some overheating and get a little bit of melting. So we didn't want to like fully cover our walls yet because the, the let's call it the roof, it's the first floor is not on here yet. So we wanted to not really be exposed to the elements with the sun and reflecting that very much. So what we've done is we did like a 12 inch rip and then that gave a solid point for us to go ahead and make a connection from our vapor barrier underneath to our vapor barrier on our walls, which will be the Intera project product. And it gave us just enough so that we're up above the uh, concrete so that the concrete guys could chalk lines for a place to screed to. So what happens is we have our subterra underneath with the two layers. We'll toss that out of the way. Next, after our next floor frame is on, but before we frame our interior partitions down here, we'll come in with a full sheet of uh, this Intera product and we'll tape it to the, the bottom rip that already exists. We'll tape all the seams at our rim. We'll spray foam down and onto this to capture it at the top. And now we have continuity of insulation running all the way up to the rim. That then connects to our zip bar and our cellulose in the, uh, the wall frame above that. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said we made a compromise. That compromise is this is a tuck under garage, just like I said, which means we have exposed concrete edge at the front, which means at the opening, we don't have insulation. 
Now, you could make an argument that like, oh, you know, you didn't really need to insulate the garage floor. You could have just insulated the other side and put a break in the slab. For me, because I've changed my own oil in a cold climate, I would rather have the garage floor insulated and have it just be a little bit warmer when I have to lay in here and work on something. Or if I have to sit in here on Christmas Eve and put a kid's bike together, I'd rather have that little bit of insulation. I also know that the first maybe six feet of this slab is compromised in some way because it's thermally coupled to the outside. There's nothing we can do about that. I mean, there's a ton of different ways that we could do this to make it more expensive, but as Steve Basic always says, something has to be the worst part of the house. In this instance, we're allowing where the garage door sits and the front of the mudroom to be colder than the rest of the house and it be a thermal connection to the outside. It happens, it's not the end of the world. Uh, they're getting an upgraded product anyway. So I still think that we have a great opportunity for success here for thermal comfort in the rest of the house. So to recap, we have two layers under our slab. We'll have one layer on the wall and then we'll have filled cavities here. We'll have that connection to, to the inside of the rim. All of our insulation is on the inside of the envelope. All of our insulation is where it is protected. It is out of the elements. It is inside the house. Um, and all the insulation down here is completely continuous. There's no framing members breaking it until we get to the stud insulation in here. Stay tuned, we haven't actually named this project yet. We'll have to go back and tag this when we uh, finally come up with a name for this project. It's an infill project here in Columbia, Missouri. Um, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is super informative and will keep you from missing the content. I think I counted the other day and I think there are 12 contributors now. We are learning from all 12 of those contributors. I enjoy their content. You're gonna miss it if you don't get the newsletter. We let you know what came out every week in that newsletter. Uh, so make sure you sign up for it. Don't forget to follow the podcast that Steve Basic and Peter Yost and I do. It's the Unbuilded Podcast. You can find it on Instagram or wherever you download podcasts. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Check out some GPS insulation. It's pretty interesting. Have a good day.